Hi there, Perfecto De Castro here and welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope you're having a great day. Aside from gear and performance related messages, I also get a ton of questions regarding music theory. Now to address this, I decided to shoot this series of videos to introduce the beginning guitarist to music theory as well as fill in the holes in the musical foundation for intermediate players. Why learn music theory? Well, in a nutshell, it is the language of music. So if you want to interact with other musicians, not necessarily just guitarists, then you need to know the language in which to speak in. And aside from musical communication, having a strong and solid musical foundation also opens up a lot of concepts and resources as far as melody, harmony, and rhythm goes. Now, I'm not particularly video savvy, so I'm going to go old school. A Sharpie, a notebook, and uh, everything will be written by hand. So feel free to follow along, grab your own uh, pen and paper, and we'll start. And I did mention that this is a series, so if you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button, ring that notification bell, so as soon as the next video comes out, you will know. Now, we'll start at the very beginning, and that is the musical alphabet. So for the musical alphabet, we only use seven letters. And instead of starting on the letter A, as normal people do, um, we're going to start on the letter C. So here it is, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then C. Now, once you've gone through all seven letters, it just repeats in a series. And this repetition are called octaves. Okay. So if you have this series right here, you go to B, then after that will be another C, D, and E, F, G, and so on. And that will continue until you've run out of frets or you've run out of keys to play. And of course the reverse also applies. So if you have a C here and you have frets or keys left over before that, then that will be a B, an A, a G, an F, an E, and so on and so forth. Now as you go in this direction, the pitch goes up, okay? Our pitch goes higher and of course when you go to the opposite direction pitch goes lower now the smallest unit of movement in music are called steps okay we have two basic kinds okay we have the whole step and we have the half step Now, if we lay out the musical alphabet again in just one octave, so we have C, D, E, F, G, A, E, C. And let's think of this in terms of piano keys. Now, a musical keyboard has white keys and black keys, right? So some notes will have a black key in between them, like so. And this is how Western pitch is divided. Now, to get from one note to the next, we move in terms of steps. So either it's either a whole step or a half step. A whole step is going from one white key to the next white key if you have a black key in between them, right? So in this case, C to D is a whole step, right? If you go from a white key to a black key, that is a half step. And of course, if you go from a black key to a white key, then that is also a half step. So C to D is a whole step, D to E is a whole step, F to G, G to A, A to B, they are all whole steps apart. Now we have two pairs of notes that don't have black keys uh, in between them. So E to F and B to C. So these are just half steps apart. So I want you to take note of this formula. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. This is the formula for your major scale. 
and we will come back to that a uh, little bit later okay but just keep it in the back of your mind now to relate all of this to guitar a half step is an equivalent to one fret movement along the string so if you move from the first fret to the second fret on the sixth string then you've just moved up a half step and if you move from the first fret to the third fret that is two frets apart then you've gone a whole step so with that in mind we can tweak the major scale um, formula and start thinking of them in terms of frets so a whole step would be two frets and two frets half step would be one fret two frets two frets two frets and then one fret so now that we have the major scale formula we are going to use that to map out all the natural notes on the fretboard so right here I have drawn 24 frets on a fretboard grid here in my notebook uh, feel free to do the same and you can follow follow along as I fill this in so for standard tuning we have E on the sixth a D G D E on the fifth fourth third second and first respectively now before we get started, I want you to think of your guitar nut, that white piece of bone or plastic at the edge of your fingerboard. I want you to think of that as your zero fret. Okay. And as the zero fret, that will be where your open string notes are. To map the notes, we're going to go string per string. I'm gonna start with the second string for no special reason. On the zero fret will be the B note, right? And according to our formula, B to C is just one fret apart. Okay. So from B, zero, I'm going to count one fret, one, and that is where the C note is. Okay. So, and let's just write C down. So C is on the first fret, second string. And we're going to start following the, uh, the sequence. So from C to D is two frets away. So one, two, that is D. D to E is two frets away. One, two. Okay. E to F is just one fret away. So from E, one fret above, that is where F is, right? F to G, two frets, one, two. Okay. G to A is two frets again. A is right here. B, A to B is two frets. So one, two, there's B. And now we've come to the repeat of the series or the octave. So B to C is one fret and that is C. And since we have frets left over, we're just going to keep uh, continuing uh, along the series. So C to D is two frets, D to E is two frets, E to F is one fret, F to G is two frets, G to A is two frets, A to B is two frets as well. So I have 24 frets right here which is uh, a typical two octave fretboard on most electric guitars nowadays. If you have a 22 fret guitar, then we finish here, we finish on the A. If you have a 21 fret, we finish there, and so on and so forth. Now, following the same formula, I want you to map out the rest of the strings. Now, as an aside, don't just copy what I write here. I want you to be able to uh, really internalize the formula and find these notes for yourself, this time on this paper grid and later on, on the actual guitar fretboard. So if you need to, pause this video, fill out the grid, and then check your work um, after you're done. But in the meantime, just for the sake of time, I am going into time-lapse mode. Okay, so check your work against 
what I've just did and make sure that the notes are in the correct place because if you're off by a fret on any particular string then everything is off and I'm pretty sure by the time you're two or three strings into filling this whole grid uh, you've already drilled this formula into your brain okay so now that we have the grid filled in these are now the white keys on the guitar fretboard so meaning all the natural notes okay unaltered now you might be asking what about the spaces in between so these are where the enharmonics or accidentals can be found these are either the sharp okay or the flat Now what a sharp does is it raises the note by half step. Okay. So if you need to play, let's say a C sharp. So you locate the C, move up a half step, which is to the next fret along the string. And that is where your C sharp is. Okay. On the piano keyboard, you have your C here, you go up a half step, that is where your C-sharp is. That's on that black key. Now the flat functions in the opposite manner. So the flat lowers the note by a half step. So in this case, let's say you need to play a D-flat. So you locate your D note. You go down a half step to the black key and that is where your D-flat is. Or on the fretboard, look at your D note, go back a half step to this fret right here and that's where your D-flat is. Some of you may be saying, well, isn't that the same note as the C-sharp? Yes, it is. And that's what enharmonic means. It means same note, but it can have two different names. We have five enharmonic notes. C-sharp is equal to D-flat, as we've just seen. Now, what's the next note? So, we have a D and the next black key is in between D and E. So this can either be a D-sharp or an E-flat. Then the next black key is in between F and G. So that can either be an F, yes, sharp, or a G-flat. Next is in between G and A. So G-sharp or A-flat. And lastly, we have the enharmonic in between A and B. So that will be an A sharp or a B flat. The main reason for me laying out the fretboard this way is so that you don't get information overload. So I'm going to flash uh, a typical fretboard grid on screen right now. <laughs> Now that fretboard has everything in it, you know, all the sharps and the flats and all that. And if you take just one look at it, it's like, ah, oh, it's, it's too much stuff. And it makes my eyes glaze over. It's like, I, I just don't wanna deal with it because there's, there's too much stuff, right? So looking at a cleaner version of the fretboard, meaning just the natural notes, it's a little easier to handle uh, visually. Now knowing that the sharp raises you one fret, and the flat lowers you one fret, also engages your brain and allows you to be more active into finding and playing the notes on the fingerboard. Now to finish up this video, I will leave you with some tips so you can start memorizing the notes on this fretboard grid and start visualizing them on your actual guitar fretboard. Now the simplest way to start finding your way around the guitar fretboard is via the landmarks method. Now on your guitar fretboard, you have markers. They can either be dots or inlays. And usually they can be found on the third fret, fifth fret, seventh, ninth, twelfth, and let's see, let's continue. So 15th, 17th, 19th, 21st, and finally the 24th fret. So these dots are not just for decoration, but they can actually function as memory markers uh, for the notes. Now notice that the 12th fret is a double dot. So that marks the octave or the repeat of the note series. So we start with an open E string on the sixth, right? And then on the 12th, that is another E. So in exactly 
in between those two E's are 12 frets. And 12 frets later, on the 24th, we have another E. Now, your most obvious landmark is the open strings. So E, A, D, G, B, E. Start by memorizing what your open string notes are. And that will take care of the, the notes on the first three frets. So you can easily count up to these notes, right? Now, if I ask you what the 10th fret fourth string note is without looking at the grid, usually what happens is people start counting from the open string all the way up to the 10th fret, which is the long way around. So this brings me to the second landmark. Always remember that it can also count backwards, okay? So instead of counting forwards from here to here, you can also count backwards from here to here. The open string notes are the same as the 12th fret notes. And since the 10th fret is closer to the 12th fret, you can start at the 12th fret and count backwards. So 12th fret, uh, fourth string is D, count backwards, two frets, and that will give you your C note. Okay, so the 12th fret covers not only uh, the notes before it, but the notes after it as well. So that, that's a, like a five fret span. Okay, so we've taken care of the notes here and the notes here, which leaves us with the notes in the middle of the fretboard. Now you have two options. You can either use the fifth fret as your landmark, okay, because straight across all the strings you have natural notes, right? A, D, G, C, E, and A. However, visually on the guitar neck, the seventh fret feels and looks more central than the, the fifth fret. So a lot of players prefer using the seventh fret as their next landmark. Um, you can do so. Just remember that on the second string, the seventh fret second string is an F sharp, not an F natural. If you use your seventh fret as your landmark, then that takes care of eighth to tenth frets, as well as the fifth, sixth, and fourth frets. So landmark one, open strings. Landmark two, 12th fret. Landmark three, either the fifth or the seventh frets. Your choice. So probably now you're asking, well, what about all these other frets way up here? Um, that's actually really easy. If you treat your 12th fret and think of it as your open strings. So I'm gonna cover that. So you have your open strings here. The dots correspond to where the previous dots are. So if this is your open, then this is like your third fret, fifth fret, seventh fret, ninth fret, and 12th frets. So this whole thing just repeats itself up here. So you can think of your 15th fret as your third fret, your 17th fret as your fifth fret, and so on and so forth. And they will have the same exact notes in the upper frets as they are in the lower frets. So the landmarks method is quick and easy to implement. Of course, there are other tips and hacks to enable you to memorize and really internalize where the fretboard notes are, but that will be on another video, so stay tuned for that. Now this concludes part one of the Music Theory for Guitarists series of videos. In the following videos, we'll be talking about key signatures, intervals, chord building, seventh chords, extended chords, and we'll work our way up to scales and modes. So stay tuned for that. So that's it. Do all the uh, good stuff that all you YouTubers do. Like, share, subscribe, leave me a comment down below, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.